Let's take a look at the most popular file type today for images, JPEG, and how it compresses data. Now I'm in the Chapter 4 folder, Image Editing, and I'm in the folder JPEG Compression. And what I've got is an image that started as a Camera Raw file, but I opened and saved as JPEG six different times, lowering the compression setting every time. If I look at the Metadata panel, in the Metadata panel, you'll see the file size gets smaller and smaller with each lowering of the compression. So this one's a little over 3 megs. This one is 1.5 megs. This one's under a meg at 800K, roughly, 700K, 400K, and 426. 426 and 471. Not a big difference. But from a distance, you really can't see the quality loss. JPEG is known as a lossy, L-O-S-S-Y, a lossy form of compression. And let me just open one image to explain what lossy means. If this was shot on a low-end camera, a smartphone, or a consumer class point-and-shoot camera, they initially save as JPEG to fit more images on your camera card. On that first image, it may look at the photo and decide, you won't notice if I trash 300 pixels. So, you've lost 300 when you just take the shot. Now, if you open it, make a change and do File, Save As, and leave it on JPEG again, Photoshop may decide to trash 300 more pixels. So, you've lost 600 pixels. And it gets progressively worse. But let's open all of the images at once to see what this does. I'm going to close this one file and I'll come back to Bridge and I'll click on the quality of 2 and shift click on the quality of 12 and it selects everything in between. Now if I double click on any one of the selected images it opens them all. So I've got 2 through 12 for the quality setting open. A little power user trick. I want more area to see my images. So on your keyboard on both Mac and Windows, you can hit Shift Tab to hide the panels only on the right. They're still there if I mouse over the dark bar on the right side, but Shift Tab hides them. Shift Tab again shows them. For now, I'm hitting Shift Tab to hide the panels on the right but leave my Tools and Options bar up. And you'll see a super little secret checkbox that I turned on called Scroll All Windows on the Hand tool. So get ready to follow along with me by clicking once on the Hand tool or hitting the letter H for Hand. And we'll leave this off for now, but I'll show you what it does and why this is handy. Now Photoshop will arrange all six of these windows so I can view them at once. So Window, Arrange, and Six Up show me all six at once. The 12 quality image is selected, and then I have 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. But on the 12 quality image, I'm going to scroll down so I can get into the pasta, and just choose View Zoom In twice. Let's go for three times. All right. Once I've zoomed in, I'm just going to pick a row of pasta to look at. So I'm looking at where these two pastas meet. Now, so that all windows go to that location, I'm going to choose Window, Arrange, Match All. All open images will go to 100% and that exact same spot. In fact, the trick on this image is all the images are the same width and height. All of them are 300 pixels per inch. The resolution, that number, is really separate from the compression technique. So in a JPEG image, the first time we saved is 12. Between 12 and 10, I don't really notice any quality loss. But I can start to see at 8 a little bit of noise here in this piece of pasta that's not really in that piece of pasta the exact same piece. I'm looking for these two kind of like eyes and a little loop of hair. That's how I described it. So between 
12 and 10, I don't see much of anything. Maybe a little bit is visible here, but much more of the trashed pixels or lossy compression, the data it threw away, is obvious right here. You'll also start to see color shifts in given areas. If I look at this, there's a little more pink here than there was there, or even here. Now, if you look at the quality of six, I can really start to see a lot more things going on. I see noise in this piece of pasta. You may see whole new colors peeking in like cyan or red or pink. And at quality of four or two, you can really clearly see patterns that have formed. And this looks like it's low resolution. But if I click on the quality of two just by clicking the title bar under image, image size, it is 7.2 by 4.8 at 300 pixels per inch. It's just been saved with a lower quality setting five previous times. So there's no helping it anymore. So when I get a JPEG, the first thing I do is put it in an uncompressed format, .psd or .tiff. So here's how I do that. If I come back to Browse in Bridge, I left the original .psd in the Lesson 4 folder for you. So the Pasta 300 pixels per inch PSD is what I'm double clicking to open. And I'll actually bring this up so it's a floating window and it will get large just so I don't mess up the ones in the background. And when I do File, Save As, the first time I save as JPEG, I just want to show you the dialog. When I hit Save, here is where I chose my compression setting. So if I had gotten this as a JPEG originally, I would choose File, Save As, and make sure the format is Photoshop, which adds the extension .psd, or I could choose to save as a TIFF. Now, I already have a TIFF in this folder, but I wanted to explain the next compression type. TIFF, and I'll just put a little dash here with my initials, TIFF does loss less compression. If I hit save with a little LZW compression, it doesn't harm the image when it's saving the file. It might look at this kitchen and say, there are a thousand pixels that have a 5% black value. Let me temporarily pull those all out, plot where they were originally, and when you open the file or print the file, I'll put them back in. So nothing is really being trashed or harmed when you save TIFF with LZW compression. And if you're a trivia buff, LZW just stands for Lempel, Ziv, and Welch, the guys who invented the compression ratio technique. Now, I promised to show you a handy little feature on the hand tool. No pun intended. So if I check the box, scroll all windows while on the hand tool and click on one document, it brings the view for all windows to the exact same spot. I love that for file comparison. And so for this example, it's really helpful. So the bottom line is, if you receive a JPEG, get it in Photoshop or TIFF immediately so you don't destroy it as you make corrections. You could save one other version of a JPEG out to someone else and it won't lose that much quality because as we can see between 12 and 10, not a lot was lost. But I never work on the JPEG again because I don't want it to get progressively worse and worse if I keep saving over that same JPEG file. So that's your summary of JPEG, which is a lossy compression, TIFF, which is a loss less compression, and Photoshop, which is not compressed at all and will keep your file with layers in Photoshop's native format. You can try this with one image of your own, just changing the compression and changing the file name every time you save to see the results that I've gotten on my screen.